Okay, so this video, um, I'm just going to talk about the emissions. Um, my personal opinion is that I think these emissions are a good thing. Uh, ask me that a few years ago? No. But what, ch what really changed my mind was um, like a week ago, I was driving and this old 5.9 drove by me and it was super loud. This is on the highway and it just screamed by me and I, was, I really didn't like that. I thought that was irritating. Um, I'm really glad that my truck is quiet. I actually think these emissions are a good thing. Could they be refined? Absolutely. And they are being refined, uh, you know, as we, um, you know, uh, each day that goes by, I know that Cummins and all these other manufacturers are trying to make these emission systems better. But if we really think about it, these emission systems have been out since 2007 and a half, right? Dodge Ram at the time introduced the 6.7 Cummins in 2007 and a half. And it had the diesel oxidation catalyst and a DPF. Didn't have SCR. SCR came later, uh, 2013. But, and it also had EGR. But these trucks have been out for a very long time, over a decade. And the advancements in the, in the emission systems have, have gotten better over the years. But... Has there ever been a documented case where emissions cause complete engine failure? And I mean like a rod out the side of the block, like the engine blew up, literally exploded because of emissions. And the answer to that is no. There is, or at least from what I have seen, read, and tried to research, there is no actual evidence that emissions will cause your engine to blow up. As a matter of fact, these trucks today are more powerful than trucks that didn't have emissions. And they get better fuel mileage today than they did in the past without emissions. I and mean, I am a prime example of that. I post my fuel mileage reports all the time. And you can see that I am getting really good fuel mileage. And by the way, I know that there are skeptics out there. And if anyone wants to take a trip with me, a five to ten hour drive, we do it in one day, I will prove that my truck gets over 20 miles to the gallon highway. It'll be at my speeds, not your speeds. It'll be the speeds that I drive, because I don't I, I I try very hard not to go over 70 miles an hour. Because once you once you go over 70, your fuel mileage is gonna tank. That, that's just a fact. But if you stay between 60 and 70 miles an hour, you're going to get really good fuel mileage. And if you don't drive like you got a heavy foot, you're going to get really good fuel mileage. So anyways, that's just to anyone who wants, who doesn't believe me, I will take you on a trip. Five, ten hour drive, and I'll prove it to you. Um, anyways, these trucks today are more fuel efficient and more powerful, and they have emissions. And what I like about the emissions now, granted, do I think EGR is a good thing? No, I think EGR is garbage. However, has EGR caused a engine to blow up? No. I hope that, and I've read where Cummins is, and other manufacturers are, are trying to build an EGR-less engine. That would be fantastic. I will. I would gladly um, pay. My, you know, if I have to buy more diesel exhaust fluid, um, if we can get EGR out, that'd be fantastic. I, I'm I'm totally fine with that. But in the meantime, uh, these trucks are super clean, and I like that, and they're quiet. I can go through drive through and I have to, I remember back in the old days, you go through drive through you got to turn the truck off, because the uh, drive through people can't hear you when you're trying to make an order. Um... I like that these trucks are clean. They're, what comes out of the tailpipe at the end of the day is nitrogen and water vapor. Nitrogen comprises 75% of our atmosphere. And water vapor, well, that's water vapor. I mean, come on. These trucks are super clean. They're cleaner than a lot of these smart cars that are driving around. But people who drive smart cars don't even know that. As a matter of fact, diesel, even diesel engines without emissions are still cleaner than your smart car. But that's another subject. Anyways, I really love that these trucks are super clean because I like to breathe clean air. I am not the type of guy that will put my face into a tailpipe and someone tell someone to hammer down 
and let me breathe in all that soot. I don't want to do that. I don't want to breathe in that carbon because they're microscopic carbon, you know, elements. And I, I don't want to breathe that into my lungs. That's absolute foolishness. Anyways, there's nothing wrong with emission systems. Are they perfect? No. But are you perfect? No. Human beings are not perfect. And things, equipment, whatever that human beings build are not perfect. Is your iPhone perfect? Is your Samsung perfect? Is your washer and dryer, dryer perfect? No. There's always going to... Every now and then you're going to have a product that will have a glitch or a problem and you got to take it back to get fixed. That's just the nature of items that are built by humans. Nothing is perfect, but we strive to ensure that we put the best product out there so that it would be reliable. You know, now, you know, there are incidences where vehicles have issues, right? Maybe uh, 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 not a complete engine failure, but engine problems, right? Well, you got to ask the question, is that emissions related or operator related? Obviously, the operator is not going to admit to anything, right? But was the oil changed on time? Did they use the correct oil? Did they change the fuel filters? Both fuel filters, by the way, the chassis mount and the engine mount. Um, are they using clean fuel? Are they using off-road diesel fuel? That will cause issues. Um, and so many other hosts of things that an operator uh, can fail to do that will cause the engine to blow up, essentially, quote unquote. But in terms of an actual documented case where emissions and solely the emissions, EGR, diesel particulate filter, regens, were the sole source of a complete engine failure, rod through the, the block, fuel system completely blown to pieces. Has there ever been a documented case where it was all caused by emissions? No. These emissions have been out for over a decade and they're chugging along just fine. PD Diesel Power is a great example. Some of his trucks in his fleet that are stock have hundreds and hundreds of thousands of miles on them and they're still chugging along. You know, he talks about maintenance and it's key to have proper maintenance and it's important these trucks with emissions can last a long time or is there going to be a chance that a sensor could fail or a sensor could misread something absolutely because that again are products that are built by man okay anything built by man is going to fail it's just the nature of the beast you just replace it and move on okay there's you're not going to have something that is completely 100 percent perfect because you yourself are not perfect Anyways, in summary, I do like the emissions. I like how clean my truck is. I like how quiet the truck is. And the Cummins emission systems, they got it packed down solid. I mean, they know how to build emission systems that'll last. I don't have to worry about active regens. Uh, as a matter of fact, I have over 1,800 miles now, and I still have yet to see an active regen. Um, I know it's always in passive regen. I, the truck regens, make no mistake, truck regens, but it's always in passive regen. Um, the difference is with Ford, they have a counter. So when you eat 500 miles, regardless, regardless if it even needs a regen, it's going to go into regen. So that's irritating about Ford. GM, I don't think GM does. I think GM and kind of follows the way Ram does it. it. It's just based on pressures, and if it needs it, it'll it'll do it. But if you're constant passive regen, you don't have to worry about it. At least from what I have observed, because I don't actually, I don't exactly know the complete specs of how they program their emissions regen process. But that's what I've observed using the monitoring tools that I have. But uh, anyway, so I hope this video is, you know, somewhat enlightening. I, I know there's probably going to be some some kid out there or someone who you know, still says, oh, these emissions are, they're going to destroy your engine. Uh, okay, where, where's your evidence on that? Don't make blanket statements. And we all do that. We all make blanket statements, right? But make sure you clarify your statements that, you know, in your opinion or what you have observed, if you have observed a complete engine failure that wasn't caused by the operator, like it was literally caused by the emissions, um, 
You know, now I'm not saying that, again, I'm not saying that there aren't issues with emissions. I'm not saying that things don't fail. A sensor, a knock sensor, or a DPF goes bad. Like those things happen. But to have a complete engine failure, as in, and what I mean by engine failure, I mean the engine blows up literally like a rod out the, the side of the block. Okay. Has that ever happened that was caused that, and the cause was emissions? No, never. So, anyways, that's, that's enough ranting. So, again, I think emissions are great. I love how quiet my truck is. It's here to stay anyways. So, instead of fighting it, just help. Instead of fighting something that you know is going to be very difficult, dang near impossible to change, go out and do something about it. Build a system that is better. Go out there and do something. Either accept it or go out there and do something yourself and try to build a system that is better. Now, these systems today are a lot better than 2007 and a half, but I know that Cummins and the other manufacturers are trying to build products that, are, that will be better. Hopefully an EGR-less engine, that would be fantastic, but we'll wait and see. All right, that's it.